we're back, we're back, we're back. Episode four. Episode four. Episode four, series two. I Mad. love it. I love it. I'm really enjoying it. We're a month deep in 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 the podcast, and that that feels good, man. Yeah, it really does. It's such like say if we do two or three a week, it's something to look forward to, and it completely yeah. switch off. Like yeah. I love it. And this one especially because... And it's the only reason I get a shower, really, I think. <laughs> oh, I've got to do a podcast. Better get a shower. I'm just... you know what I mean? better, better sort my stuff out here. But, um, no, it's great. I'm loving it. And, and especially this one, again, because this is, this is like uh, a new friend of yours. Um, I yeah. met once, I think, when we were yeah, out. We, we went out, didn't we? You've been, you've been working with her for a long time, so I guess it was a nice catch-up for you as well. Yeah, it really was. It was great. I mean, I, when I... When I got sent the script for this, um, it's for, for a new Sky One series called Intergalactic, which is a 10 one hour episode Sky One series um, that I was very fortunate enough to to be part of for the last eight months of my life. Um, and when I saw Eleanor Tomlinson was doing it, when it, you know, when it says talent attached, there were so many great people. But I, I mean, Eleanor was, was, was one for me that I was like, oh, buzzing. I'm really excited to work with her. And I'm not just saying that because... <laughs> you know, she, she's on the podcast. I, I genuinely mean it. Because um, we've got a lot of mutual friends. I know Georgia Groom, um, who she obviously worked with on um, Angus Fong's and Perfect Snog, and I've known her for a long time. So we've got, a, a, you know, a, a few few mutual friends. But, um, yeah, she's so cool, mate. She's so cool. Yeah. Um, and, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, particularly for you, this was a sore subject, right? Nando's, yeah. I mean, I, I feel like our relationship, me, mine and Eleanor's, has sort of like thistled out a little bit. It's not the same as it was since the podcast. I love that. Two seconds ago. Oh, she's great. She's amazing. Yeah, but then I remember. Fucking like, Nando's. Uh, okay, Nando's love. Hey? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that and she did one of her nomination things to me the other night. On um, It was on oh, yeah. It was a Wednesday night. You know them down a drink nominations? Oh, yeah. You know what people are doing? She nominated me for that at 11 o'clock at night on a Wednesday. And I wasn't drinking. So I was like, oh, God, all right, then, I'll do it. <laughs> I started to drink on a Wednesday at 11 what, o'clock at night. Did you take a pint off? Uh, it was a pint of Budweiser. Nice. But then after I'd done that, I was like, oh, I'll have another beer now. So I started my drinking session at 11 o'clock at night. So but for that, the, no, it's not. There is, I think we say this in the, in the podcast, up, there is no time anymore. There is no days anymore. It's it just she had that thing on Facebook that said we're not going to be calling them days anymore. We're going to be calling them this day and that day. Was it you that yeah. might have been? Was it you? Yeah, yeah this it day, that really... day, some other day. Like today, I don't know what day it is. I don't really care what day it is. It's just another day, you know. Yeah. Every and... day feels like a Sunday at the minute, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly. And um, I think it is actually Sunday today. And it is Sunday today, yeah. Hard yeah. in this. Um. But yeah, again, you know, lovely chat with Eleanor. Um, the subject, you know, again, I, 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 I love the Nando's, but I kind of get where she's coming from, I guess. You're a dickhead, mate. <laughs> um, simple as that. It's as simple as that. It's not just like, chicken. I don't trust people who say it's just chicken because, you know, well, like we say in the podcast, there's absolutely no way that you can create that at your home. There's no... And there's no way. You won't even be able to make the mash the way they make their mash or the rice the way they make their rice. You're mm. absolutely wrong. It's not just chicken and it's not just rice. It's Nando's rice and it's Nando's chicken. Right. Sorry before, to all the vegetarians. I'm sorry. Before Tom o busts a vein in his head, let's put the interview on. Uh, the chat. Why don't you say interview? Let's put the chat on. <laughs> Eleanor Tomlinson. Ready when you are. Back again, episode whatever. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even I don't even know what day it is, mate. Never mind what episode it is. It's mental, isn't it? But we're uh, we're on episode. I was gonna say like thirty or something like that. Something, well, yeah. something. But we've um we've got a good friend <laughs> of mine. We've had a lot of mutual friends over a long time, haven't we, Al? Uh, yeah, we have. We, we have. finally we we working together um, this year on a series called Intergalactic, which um, I, I really enjoyed. I bet I loved it. I loved 
loved it. It's funny, I was um, reminiscing about it the other day and I actually really miss you lot. It was it was a really good group of like cool, very different people. I don't think, so, yeah, I don't think we'll, we'll probably never work together again unless it goes to a second series. Which yeah. Which it will after this. It, it, was, it was the longest job I've ever done. Is it the longest job you've ever done? Yeah, one of them, seven months, yeah. That's yeah. a long time, isn't it? That was six months each. So yeah, yeah. So it's it's long, yeah, really long. But it's mad because it's just it's one of those things, you know. You move. I hadn't really spent any time in Manchester. You move up to Manchester and you live with people that you didn't know before for seven months, and then you don't see them afterwards. It's so it's such a weird way of living your life, isn't it? It's the strangest thing about being an actor, I find, isn't it? Because yeah. you become such so, such good friends, and like you're living in each other's pockets, and you're going out, and you. You know, you just you're spending a lot of time together, and then all of a sudden it's like just goes nothing. Like, yeah. yeah, it's weird. It's really yeah, weird. It's, it's weird, but it's like, like that was literally what I was just about to say. Like, because Manchester, have you done much filming in Manchester before? Oh. None. None. Never. No, nothing. I've been a few times. Yeah, like Yorkshire Telly used to be based up there, didn't it? So I used to go for auditions. Yeah. And stuff, was it Granada? Granada. Yeah, Granada. Well, yeah, ITV Granada was here, yeah, 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 years ago, I think, yeah. It's a yeah, great city, yeah. though, obviously, it's where you're from, isn't it, and... It's, uh, it's a good city. Yeah, 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 oh, can I you not tell? Know <laughs> I know, I should have got that, didn't I? I, I bet know. you, I um, bet you never guess where Ellen is from, Andy. You London. Ne- when she told me, I was like, oh, God. <laughs> I never where, where are you actually from, Eleanor? I'm from Beverly, near Hull. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Beverly oh, from yeah. Beverly. Oh, yeah. from <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh right, okay, okay. I, you did you move to London when you was young, Al? Because your 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 mum's an actor, isn't she? Mum Is, and dad. Your mum yeah. and both actors. Mum and dad. Mum's a mum's a comedian and a singer. Dad's an actor and a horse racing commentator. Yeah. And my brother's oh, wow. well. So yeah, we're all in it. But yeah, so I was born in London and then moved up north because uh, they wanted to bring us up in the country and with their family so yeah so I've been in I was in Beverly for like 18 years it's oh, really good no. say if you have a bit of a drink or like we're, when we're on set you, you'll whip out the accent and it's yeah. like <laughs> it really doesn't suit you it really really doesn't suit you I was because I, I know you so well with your accent yeah you pull it out it's like oh well it's it's mad that we didn't really come across each other before we did as well because you're in Grimsby aren't you so it's yeah not really Beverly, like Grimsby are only what yeah Half hour, forty minutes away. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. not too. Far, is it? Crazy. Yeah. Would, would Scunny be your like seaside destination when you was a kid? Scunny. Yeah, probably. Cle- probably Cle- more like is it? Sorry. Cle- Cle- yeah. yeah. Say that again, El. Sorry. Probably more like Bridlington. Have they got a beach there? I've never been there. I don't think. Yeah, well, it's Fraysthorpe Beach is right just outside of Bridlington, isn't it? So, so I've never been up that yeah, way. Like, but yeah. maybe up in Skegness and all them sort of things. I did a lot, a lot of that when I was a kid. Yeah. Ske- yeah. yeah. Skegness. Yeah. There's one place I've never done a night out before, but apparently it's quite good. Is it? Really? Is there yeah, a pop apparently. World there, Tommy? Sorry? Is there a pop world? Pop I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love obsession. She set herself this challenge to travel around the country and visit every pop world in the in, in the country and it's nice. one of the first things we did when we first met on um on intergalactic i think we both we was just talking about nights out and we i was talking about flares and reflex that we used to have in cleefops and we were saying it's like an old 80s bar club mm-hmm. and ellen mentioned pop world and yeah. how many of them have you done Al? is that is that the night that i was out with you then that we because we ended up in pop world yeah, that- yeah. yeah that's one of them yeah so ah, all right about I think I've done about three or four now. Did, we did one with you in Birmingham as well, didn't we? Yeah, we went to the one in, um, is it in Broad Street. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good night. Oh, <laughs> God. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Pop World's are always good fun, though. I like the atmosphere in Pop World because the music's I, like... You know, I always... I always begrudge going in because, like, my missus loves it and I'm like, oh, I'm not going, I'm not going Pop World. No, grow up. But as soon as I'm in there, I'm like, S oh, club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it. It's Love just it. good music. It's good enjoy like fun music, and it? It's not like hey, you go to some places, like a lot of the time the music can be quite like I don't know, it's just you can get quite high yeah. music, can't you? Yeah. yeah. And I like I like the kind of music personally that 
normally the clubs that you go to that play it are quite pretentious. Like I like hip hop and stuff. So if you go to kind of clubs that play it, everyone's kind of stood around looking cool. And I don't like that. Big balls where, with sparklers and stuff. Exactly. Where pop world, everyone's just dancing and having fun. So you kind of like, fuck yeah. it, I'm going to do the same. Yeah, this yeah. is good. I'm really Tomo, cheap. you're the worst. Because you just blooming, you suddenly decide you've had enough and that's it. You're like, right, I'm going home. And you just leave. Yeah. I'm like, uh, yeah. Irish. I do. I literally just get to the point where I just go, whoosh, done. Yeah. I, I look, I'm the same. I look at Charlotte, I go, come on. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's not him saying, it's not him not saying goodbye. It's Charlotte not letting you lot see the state of him. Like, come on, Tomo, uh, you're coming home. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was really funny that, as at that, that, that night we was all out in Manchester. Um, we was all steaming and I, and I went outside and Charlotte wanted to go home. I was like, I'm not going home. Fucking staying out. <laughs> she was like, come on. I went, ah, fuck this. And she was with my mate Jack. Um, and I said, and I said, you two, go on, fuck it, make sure she gets home right. And I went and stumbled into the club next door, which is an R and B place. And Charlotte sort of stood there and went to Jack. She went, give it two minutes, two minutes, and it'll be <laughs> <laughs> paid to get in. Got in, and I thought, fuck this. <laughs> then went back out. <laughs> I love that. I love Charlotte. She's hilarious. She, yeah, yeah. It's good fun when she's had a drink. She's oh, an. Oh yeah. She is. She's yeah. what? Nah, she's an animal. She's an animal. Horse, yeah. Remember at Kendall calling Andy when she was just charging at everyone? Oh, yeah, man. God. Yeah, she just runs at people like her own like one person mosh pit. Yeah. Like literally just takes you out. It's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd have married her. That's my girl. But anyway, <laughs> we're, um, we're not here to talk about Charlotte and her drunken antics. Um, <laughs> although, although she started listening to the podcast now, so she'll love this. <laughs> We've been doing it for ages now, and she's not listening to any. She's listening to Martin Comstons now downstairs, and she listens to Vicky. But again, with the YouTube thing, like she she prefers it with with the YouTube thing. It just and it just gives people a bit more. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. More to yeah, yeah, yeah. instead of just listening. But um, yeah, we with every guest we get them to come on with a subject. And when you told me yours, your first one, it, it pissed me off. A bit like Martin's. Yeah. I can yeah. imagine you were yeah. fuming. Are you ready? Are you ready? Nando's. It's bollocks. Biggest it's bollocks. <laughs> Chicken and chips overpriced. It is crap. I hate it. I hate it. I hate the whole system as well. You go in and then you have to go up to the bar to order. It's just stressful. Yeah, I remember you saying that. I think we we, we was going to go one time and you went, it's funny how they walk you in and sit you down, but then make you go up to the bar. Yeah. Food. Yeah, what? and it's basically just chicken and chips, and it's expensive. It's yeah. not chicken. It is not just chicken. If you can write, if, if, <laughs> when this is all said and done, we said about <laughs> come down with me, didn't we? We said we'll yeah. come, come up to you. You'll come here when when it's your turn. Then if you can make me something that tastes like Nando's, if you can cook it in the way that it tastes in Nando's, yeah. I'll be pressed. All right. Yeah. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, all you need is. All you need is the sauces and like a, a barbecue because it's, yeah. it's just cooked on like a charcoal pit, isn't it, really? Yeah. Well, you're both sound just, really confident. So if I you mean, can... it is just chicken tea, it's just marinated chicken. Like, oh, it's nice. I like it. Chicken. That's the thing. It's a restaurant that just does chicken. Yeah, what, but what, that's what, not what a bad is, thing. Why is it? Why is it so laddy? Why is it that so many lads love it? Why I think... is it? Because I think it's more of a lad restaurant than a girl restaurant. I think it's... No, I think you're right. I think it's maybe something to do with... I'm weird like this and look well into stuff. Maybe it's something to do with, like, the fact that you're, like, eating off the bones. Do you know what I mean? It's quite, like, Um, macho. Do you know what I mean? Cavemen. Cavemen, yeah, kind (laughs) of (laughs) machoistic (laughs) bullshit. Didn't you go, like, three times in one day, Tom, like, when we were in Manchester? Well, me and and Ollie Cooper Smith... um, Yeah who's going to come, he's going to do an episode of this soon. Um, we met when, when we, I, I first met Ollie when we was doing Intergalactic and um, we met in the gym. Uh, and then we both said, we, after we'd done our workout, we turned around and said, oh, fuck, I'm starving. I could just eat summer. And we had to go to rehearsals in an hour. And we was like, I said to him, I was like, it's fancy and Nando's, you like Nando's? He was like, and then from then, me and, me and Ollie, I reckon we used to do, it was even Wagamamas on Nando's that we, uh, we that's all we see, ate. That, that's maybe the thing as well. Um, is you can kind of like it's protein in it, so lads who go to the gym, yeah, it's, yeah. it's not like McDonald's which is going to pile the pounds on, it's going to 
It's going to pile the muscle on, I guess, isn't it? Is it? I don't know. I'm not a, a dietitian at all, as you can tell. You have, really? But no, what, what would you have, El, if you went to Nando's? Chicken and chips is all I do. <laughs> no, I like I like the, uh, peas. the peas and the rice. The peas and the rice is, rice is good. good. The garlic bread. I guess the menu is a bit like, but the burgers are good, El. You like yeah, a yeah. All right. I like, I like, I love a southern fried chicken burger. But do they fry the chicken or do they just char grill it? I don't think it's southern fried, is it? No, no it's just grilled, isn't it? <laughs> do you like KFC then? Yeah, I do. Yeah. Because yeah. that's just a restaurant that does just chicken. Yeah, but with that... Which is like, your argument. <laughs> yeah, 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 fair. But that's like that's like dirty takeout. That's like hangover or like 3 a.m. food. Yeah. Nando's yeah. is like a sit-down job. <clears throat> so if yeah, someone true. take you out on a date... Yeah. Say I said to you, right, let's go out on a date and... Um, I'll take my wedding ring off for this one. Um, <laughs> Charlotte listens to this now. <laughs> if I said to you, let's go on a date, and you was like, okay, and I said to you, where do you want to go? And you was like, surprise me, and I took you to Nando. <laughs> Would there be a second date? No. 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 <laughs> it's not a good date tackle, is it, Nando's? That's no, a cheap. It's a cheap date, isn't it? But it is quite popular for dates as well, though. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, I I don't know. I yeah, I don't think I'd go on a a date to Nando's personally. What on a, like on a, on a first date? So if you like, so if me and Charlotte, when Charlotte travels up to Manchester to see me or wherever it is that I'm working, she'll always go. Should we get Nando's? Yeah, that's different. You're married. You, you won't fight yeah. in front of her on a first date, would you? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of them, <laughs> probably. <laughs> What, sorry, we're going with the tone, Eleanor. Sorry. No, I love it. I love it. What would be your ideal, <clears throat> for both of you, what would be an ideal first date restaurant? Eleanor, you go first. Oh, God. You know, I do a Wagamama. I love Wagamama. You do Wagamama? Yeah, 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 yeah. Wagamama's not very, I mean, I guess it's a first date, so you don't want to be too intimate. But yeah, Wagamama's, you're, you're like sat on the tables with everyone, aren't you? That's the yeah. only thing that I it's quite quick though, so if it's not going well, yeah, you can just get, you can out. get out. Yeah, yeah. I like where you read that there. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love that you think about it going wrong. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know. I yeah, out. Always looking for the answer, <laughs> yeah. Because if you go to like, yeah, if you if you go to somewhere, I don't know, fancy like, where that that place that we went to in Manchester, that twenty stories was good, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, that was nice. Sunday roast, that was amazing. That was really good. But you you find that you 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 can be sat there for a good hour hour and a half and if you're on a date yeah. like you said that it's not going well you'd be like Ooh. yeah yeah it's better to go there with your mates or or on a date with someone you've been on like a few dates with already and you want to do something a bit more special that's nicer I mean, yeah i'd say the waggers is probably first date yeah it's good food yeah. And the- yeah i'll say waggers as well apart from like yeah i, mean, I suppose the sitting on a bench with other people is not that bad is it on a first date you don't want to be too kind of well, it gets really awkward silence as well because it's so loud. It doesn't feel like yeah, it's loud. You know anything? Yeah, yeah. The one thing that does my head in about Nando's is that they still, in this day and age, it's 2020, and when you go in, they still ask you, "Have you been to Nando's before?" <laughs> like, I love it's it. It's like. I hate it. It's like, have you been here before? Even if you haven't, it's like, not really, but I know how a fucking restaurant works. Like, yeah. I'm not. Yeah. You know what I mean? I order food and it comes. I get it. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but if you if you haven't been there before, then like, like Elle said, you might be sat yeah. there for hours waiting for someone to come and take your order. I don't think you should be allowed out if you're going to sit there for that long. <laughs> I think, I think, I think you'll, I think you'll clock it. I think you'll go self-service this it's like uh it's like going to like a pub restaurant in it there's, there's plenty of self self-service ones now i think majority are kind of well like pub grubs all normally self-service isn't it? same in it mm. pub grub for a first date what would you do there Ellen? what would you think there yeah you do? yeah i'd do a pub grub. Yeah? yeah yeah definitely i think that'd be a good it's, first date pub yeah, it's a, bit more, a bit more atmospheric isn't it and if it's going well yeah. we get yeah. a drink yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean drinks, yeah I mean, you could get sake and wagamamas, but that just gets you, you know. Yeah. <laughs> what about if I took you to, to Nando's and then... <laughs> I love that he's taking you on the date now. If I, But then I rescued it with Pop World. Yeah, but you see, I'd be in such a hole having spent 
two hours waiting for someone <laughs> to come and take my order in Nando's. And then you'd take me to Park World and I just wouldn't be feeling it. And you'd be stinking a chicken. Yeah. And chips. Because that's all they do. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. They don't. <laughs> open your mind. <laughs> I need a fat card. You you need, you're not getting one now. Why? Oh, well, not, yeah, obviously not now. But So if they offered you a black card, Elle, would you take it? I'd take it and give it to you. Yeah. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That would make my life if I had a black card. But then it was like, would you get bored of it? Tommy, no. you went four times in one day. I don't think you're getting bored of it anytime soon. Yeah. When we I was... think I'd get bored of it. Chick- chicken's just like, it's just the best meat, isn't it? Yeah. I think. It's, yeah. But it's, it, like you say, it's all done on like a barbecue. So it's super easy. I'm going to do it for you. It's going to be my combined what's meat dish. What, what's your favourite <laughs> meal to cook, Al? I love doing a Sunday roast. I did a roast beef the other day. I've never done beef before. But it was really good. It was mm. nice. What veg? <laughs> Maybe like a broccoli cheese. I do broccoli cheese instead of collie cheese. And uh, broccoli cheese. Yeah. I've had broccoli nice. cheese. It's nice. Game changer. Yeah. Lovely. Yeah. Um, and then probably it's got to have Yorkshire's, big old Yorkshire's. You make your own Yorkshire puddings. I can do. Probably wouldn't. But it's make nice. or break for a good roast. That. Yeah, it is. Yeah. But if you're going to do beef as well, I like it really, really rare. Yeah. Um, How do you make roast beef rare, though? Cause it, and you got to just sit it in the, for hours? or You literally do it for like half an hour, I think. But you just like preheat oh. your oven. And then like if you seal it as well before you do it, then it's sort of already uh, cooking. Cooking like <laughs> All, all them people listening to this getting fo- getting food poisoning now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if Martin Compton was to listen to this episode, he'd be fuming. What did you think? Because you... I listened to him. Oh my god, I was so shocked. It's I mental, knew. isn't it? I, I say it's Sunday roast my favourite meal of the week. I'd have it every day. If I was on a desert island with only one thing, it'd be a Sunday roast. Really? Yeah, definitely. See, I, I like it, but like. <sighs> I, I don't like when I was a kid. I used to have it every week, like you. I'd be like, "Mum, it's Sunday. Why have you not done a roast? Like, what's yeah. going on?" But now, as I've got older, it's kind of like, eh, because I think I've got to cook it myself, and I can't think of anything worse to cook. Really? Do you know, there's just too many pans involved for me, so, which mm. means more washing up. If you make like a curry, you can yeah. pretty much do a curry in two pans. You've got like you kind of you you wok or whatever to kind of do it, and then you rice pan. Where a Sunday you roast, you've got to have. Do you clean do it along when you cook? Nah. Do you, well? Do I do what? Do you clean as you go along? So say like, say you're preparing something and you've got five minutes before you need to go on to your next thing. Will you clear the pans, put it in the dishwasher and like sort of clear up as, you, as you're going along whilst you're cooking? Or do you just let it all build up? My flat doesn't have a dishwasher, so I tend to clean a bit and then keep exactly. going or reuse it. But, um, but if I have a dishwasher, I'd probably just leave it. Really? <laughs> do you clean as you go? I do, yeah, I do, but Charlotte doesn't. If Charlotte does a Sunday roast, honestly, we're still cleaning up on Tuesday. Really? <laughs> honestly, it's like it, she does the best, the, the the best roast I, I reckon I've ever had. But like, honestly, when you walk into the kitchen, it's like she's gone in there with a bat and just swung it. <laughs> everything. Trying yeah, to, I'm like that. Like it's a circus game. Your head's in cooking, though. That's why a roast's nice, because a head is in the cooking, not, oh, let's tidy up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That's so why it's good food. Do you lads cook? Do you, share, do you share the cooking? Do you both cook? Uh, uh, land is a really good cook, aren't you? Yeah, I, see, I, like, learned from an early age, because it's like my mum and dad work, so from being about 13, 14, my mum was like, that's that, that's that, go. Um, and then working since being 15, kind of, you know, yeah. just living in flats here and there and stuff. But yeah, my, my missus is the opposite. Her mum used to cook for her till she was like left home, so she oh, doesn't yeah. really cook that much. So I do sort of the, most of the cooking, but I love it. I love cooking. It's one of my yeah. favourite things to do. And it's yeah, me or Charlotte. Charlotte will either cook like we don't help each other normally. 
it's like I'll go right. It's my turn to cook tonight, and then Charlotte will right. Well, I'll cook tomorrow. But um, I don't know because we our kitchen's really small. So I reckon if we if we're just getting under each other, I'll try to do it. Yeah, it'd just be a bit of a nightmare, really. Yeah. Hmm. And I've got really like I um talking going back to washing up. I've started to really enjoy washing up in a weird way, kind of like. Is this since quarantine, or is this? Has it been no, no, time? this is pre-quarantine. This is like I've kind of started using washing up as a bit of like a mindful exercise. Do you know what I mean? So like, as you're washing up, you're kind of just in the zone of washing up. You're not thinking about yesterday or tomorrow. You just kind of right. This cup needs cleaning or whatever. And I've yeah. kind of learned to enjoy it through using it as a mindful exercise. And it's uh, yeah. I, I don't. I mean, really I don't look, look, look forward to it. It's, it's drying that I hate. I hate oh, that. I leave them on the rack. I leave them on the yeah. rack. Fuck drying stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a dishwasher. It's loads easier. <laughs> See, Stop. we had a dishwasher, but I just find them like they just they just get like really dirty and smelly really quickly. And well, then you've got to clean the dishwasher, and it's like, well, what? Uh, clean the pots. You got to pre-clean the pots, aren't you? Then put them in the dishwasher. Not really. You nah. I don't know. If you get rinse aid and, and the salt that you need, it sort of cleans itself, really. Rinse aid? Rinse aid, yeah. Rinse aid. Sounds very American, that, doesn't it? So <clears> rinse aid! Sponsor. Get your rinse aid! Are they sponsoring <laughs> it? Yeah. 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 yeah sponsoring. Well, fucking Nando's are. <laughs> 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 like, um, Sorry, there goes your black card, both of them. There goes my black card, yeah. Damn. <laughs> Um, we normally go for a Nando's when we um when we record when we're allowed out, don't we? Mm. That's normally our go Nando's or Subway. It depends how busy yeah, we, we are. Go to Subway. I can't another one. Can't bear it. I hate Subway choices. I hate the whole thing. Tomato it's not my favourite. Sandwich is overrated. A what? What? Tomato in a sandwich. It's the only time I eat tomatoes. Really? Is it? Yeah. It I don't like tomatoes. Yeah, soggy bread. Yeah, no, it makes me. Yeah, it depends how long they've been in there, I guess, doesn't it? But yeah, yeah, Subway's not not my favourite. It's not my go-to, but it's kind of it's kind of quick and easy, isn't it? And it's a little bit more lighter, I guess, and healthier than. Yeah. What's your quick and easy if you need a quick snack out? Say if you've got half an hour before the train. Like ham and cheese sandwich, but just not a Subway. Mm. I don't like the shape of like anything about Subway. You yeah, know, you were a boots meal deal. Boots meal deal or M&S meal deal kind of girl. Or is he not bothered either? Depends what's available. What was the first option? Boots. Oh, yeah, boots. Yeah, yeah I like I've yeah. got a loyalty card in boots, so, you know, I get points. So every little helps. <laughs> <laughs> I always find them points come dead, dead handy when you're, like, when you're about to fly out somewhere. Yeah. Like every time I've gone to an airport, it must be the only place that they ask, like, do you want to use your points? I'm like, yeah, yeah, I want to use my points. If anyone... <laughs> You've what? I've never had a points card anywhere. Really? Test Why? Like that. Because we don't use the same places. Like, we'll just what go wherever. Don't Nando's have not... a points card? Yeah, Nando's have a points yeah, card. You points that. Card. Nando's. That's the only one I've got, actually, in Nando. That's the only one that I've got. <laughs> religiously <laughs> in my chilies. <laughs> that's where your loyalty lies do yeah, you not well, use a boots card though like travelling on trains for well I suppose you don't really train it much more for auditions do you no I just get offered work nine in ten times now <laughs> <laughs> dickhead you know, you drive <laughs> yeah. oh yeah no I, I, I just never just I, I'm not very good with, with <laughs> stuff like that like Charlotte had to set up my Nando's card for me, like go online and do all that. I'm just not very good with all that. So the idea of doing it for a Boots card, for some of that I'll use once a year, I just don't see the point. Mm. So like my back, I'm not bothered. Don't care. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was, uh, so when we, we spoke out, now we spoke on the phone this morning, didn't we, about, um, about the subjects. And then you told me about your other subject. Yeah. So my other subject is more of a debate thing. I wanted to ask you guys what you thought, because I have a bit of a a bit of a sort of love hate relationship with social media. And in many ways, like we're all told nowadays, aren't we, that if you don't have a social media presence, you won't 
network as such and it's great for publicizing if you've got a brand or you've got a, a store if you're trying to set something up it's been amazing for like independent people to be able to get up and and create a form of work for themselves in whatever way and that and that includes influencing and what have you but if I have one regret in my life like my biggest regret is when things like Facebook and when it was MSM when we were kids when they first came out the amount of hours that I spent staring yeah. at the computer screen when my family were in the other room and I didn't talk to them and I, I see that just hours and hours and hours of time that I'll never get back that I could have been just chatting to, learning, hearing their stories, just talking to them. Because suddenly people just go from your life and then all those opportunities to ask those questions you never get. And I, I just, I, I worry that with social media, we're breeding a really insecure generation, like the generation below us even. Or it, It's also like when you're in pop world and you're, you're on the dance floor and you see girls literally dancing like this to their phone. Who is that for? Why aren't you in the moment with your mates and, and all these selfies and all this airbrushing? It's designed to make other people think that you are perfect or that you've got... No one ever puts that they're having a really shit day online. You know, it's always just, oh, look at my life, look at my life. And it actually, I think, in so many ways, it's really brilliant and it's great for, for a lot and a lot of things. But... I, I really worry about what it's doing to us as people and our communication with each other. Because even if you're if you're at dinner and you have your phone on the table, the subliminal message that you're giving out to everyone at that table is that if that phone goes off, that is more important and the person calling you or texting you is more important than the people that you're sat chatting to. And yet we all do it. We're all guilty that we've always got our phones on it. But you, you can be mid-chat with someone and your phone goes off and you look at it. And it's it's so it's so rude, and that that's a different thing. That's phones, but it's with social media. I think I'm just a bit worried about what we're what we're what we're sort of advising young people to be and to look like and how to dress and 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 also is it is it a fad? Is it a phase that's going to end in ten years? Are we going to have Instagram because we don't have MSN anymore? And you know yeah. what, what else is yeah, that's coming on? That. And, and and are we going to have it? So people that are making a career off it, so all the influencers, what have you, they're living the high life. Like on your um, podcast with Martin, you were saying about how people get shot into fame and then they just get dropped. In the same way with this kind of influencer lifestyle, if Instagram just goes eventually, if it just drops out, what are they going to do? What what qualifications are they going to have? What means of making a living? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, we, we, I mean, it's it's mad the amount of guests that we've had speak about this as well, and it, it you know, it's one of them things. It's one of them subjects that, pardon. I think it is quite a big problem. Not a problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I was saying it can be a problem, <laughs> but it can also be great as well. That's it. I mean, like I've said before, like the you know the social media should have been like this amazing tool that you know, defies uh, gender, defies sexuality, defies nationality, race, everything, because it's everyone in the world can come together on this one little spot and we can all chat and we can all share ideas. And instead you get, you know, right wing, horrible stuff pushed or you get, like you say, you know, girls kind of not forcing other girls to look a certain way, but like, you know, like say influencing saying this is how you should look you should look perfect and you know and it's 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 us we've kind of as as a species have just balls it up like we do with everything else i guess it's yeah yeah, it, yeah. It, you know because i remember the days of msn um and that was a little bit more intimate i guess right because it was mm-hmm. it was you only had your friends on there so you could set your yeah. status could you? you could change your little bar status yeah. thing Log in and out all the time to get noticed. I used to do that. Yeah, to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that time. Oh my god! Do that. Can you You're remember that? <laughs> yeah, and um, when you used to put, I always used to put Tom <laughs> loves star 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 of the like oh yeah. Tom says the star star yeah. star. Yeah. I've got him on my friends list, and it's like really like people will pop up going, oh, who, who do you fancy? Who are you talking to? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh my or God. you'd put like really stupid yeah. messages like, like, 
oh my god, um, isn't she amazing or something like that? And then yeah. like you get people going, are you on about? Like, oh, <laughs> can you remember them bitmojis that came <laughs> for a bit? Them ones that you used to be able to send and it used to be a moving emoji. Can you remember them? Yeah. Go, yeah. say something. And you can like, <laughs> once. But then well, it gets, like, it got well, it turned into somewhat bad then, didn't it? Like, people get this, like, again, like with, with grooming gangs, I guess, like a lot of people can use them sort of platforms to to, to do what they do on, on them sorts of things. But like, that, that was such a good platform where, it could have been you it was it was used for something great but then it then got adopted for all the bad things like what you've just been saying about facebook is it's a great yeah. to stay in touch with say if you meet someone on holiday you'll add them on facebook you know you, you'll meet yeah if you go on holiday as a couple me and charlotte will always bump into another couple you stay in touch with them on facebook and it's nice to see that people are doing well but then you always come across that one video that you just think why am i even seeing shit like that do you know what i mean yeah but also just like even a comment you know we're all guilty of it like you put up a picture and immediately you want to know how many likes it's got or how many more followers it's gained you which makes you feel good so you go back for more and before you know it you're you don't even <clears> know <throat> you're doing it and it if you i noticed on instagram recently i had i checked my um like usage thing and it said you've spent 51 minutes on Instagram today in total. And I was like, shit, oh my God. That's, and yeah. that's not even a lot, probably judging by what a lot of people spend on it. But no, it's, I, it's, you it's do that. The thing, like if you, if you just keep checking on it all the time, you get this buzz of, oh yeah, oh, people liked that. Oh, I'm popular. Oh, I might work again. Oh, people like what, what they're seeing. But then it takes one comment of someone saying, you look ugly or I hate what you're wearing or I hate your acting and I feel shit for the rest of the day and it's it's yeah it's it's kind of combating that but also what are we doing to people that aren't trained to deal with criticism like we are as actors you know we 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 see a comment and go okay yeah so the film wasn't to everyone's taste yeah fine to be honest it's it's water for off a duck's back I don't really care but then if you've got a young girl who puts up a picture and someone makes a comment about how she looks She's going to get in her head about that. And I just I just wonder, it's, it's been so good in so many ways. And like you say, keeping in touch with people that you've met on a holiday that are sort of mates in, in a really distant way, it's great. But then what, what's it creating in terms of our opinion of ourselves and how we treat others? Yeah, it's like a, it's <clears throat> an addiction, isn't it? It's like, yeah. say if you put a I, and it gets like I don't know a thousand likes or two thousand likes it's like and I've done it before like I'll say I'll be sat there to shout and I'll go god that, that photo that I put on early on got 15,000 likes or something and it's yeah. like I, I think I put one on for Mother's Day um, for my mum who passed away and it's like you, you sort of think why did I why do I put that on there because yeah. I've not really got any personal friends on there in a way like yeah. No, I, I've got, you know, obviously like us three, we'll all follow each other and stuff like that. But, you know, we've got we've got numbers. So if ever, you know, I'll text you and say, how are you doing? Or we'll have a phone yeah. call. But I'll put this thing out on Instagram. And then it, I think it, it got like 15,000 likes. And, I, and I'm laid in bed with Charlotte and I'm going, oh, that photo that I put on earlier on got 15,000 likes. And it's like, I, I, don't, yeah, I don't know what it is. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like it, it, a function it, thing, isn't it? It's weird. Yeah. It is like a self-justification, isn't it? It is that in some way in your head that's you going, um, I'm doing well because, like Eleanor said, like you are told in a way as an actor, like nowadays especially, like you should have social media and you should be yeah. posting regularly, you know, because and it does work. Like I've spoken, I think, on the podcast before. I've I've heard of actors getting parts because they've they've tweeted or they've put a post on social media saying that they haven't got the part, and then they've then they've got the part wow what do you what do you mean <clears throat> i've heard of actors uh through the grapevine i don't know who or you know who have like gone for a part not got the part then sort of gone home later on and just put maybe not even like meaning it just put like oh gutted went for an audition today didn't get it and then a couple of days later they've had a call saying you've got the part purely because people have been retweeting it like oh my god gutted can't believe you didn't get it would love to see you in this da, 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 da. And then it takes one exec producer to look at it and go, that's had 50,000 retweets. That's 50,000 people sat on a cinema seat, guaranteed, yeah. Yeah. you know? 
true. Films so nowadays are who's yeah. right for the part nowadays. Is no, it? mate, no, no, all films nowadays are cast like that. You know, if if yeah. in um, Hollywood especially, they if they've got a a part for a young female love interest or a young female hero or male or whatever, they will think they will get a list of actors like they used to do back in the day or whatever. But now they'll go through the social media and they'll go, right, well, you know, this one's got 50,000 followers. This one's only got 20,000. Yeah. To them, that's 30,000 more people almost guaranteed to be on, to be on a cinema seat. Yeah. I need my game. And it's what, sorry? I need to up my game. I need more followers. <laughs> buy followers as well can't you now yeah people yeah which is you. weird yeah people can buy followers mm. so I, really, I don't really know how that works is it? Uh, a lot yeah. i used to work with did it because uh, I, I used to work for a social media uh magazine uh uni lads doing little bits of comedy writing and stuff for him and uh, there was a lad who worked there who was sort of setting up a photography page and stuff like that and uh, he didn't buy followers, but you can pay so much a month on places like Instagram. And what it does is you put in certain hashtags and that will then like, um, it will just like photos that people put on with them hashtags. So nine out of 10 times, then people will go, oh, they've liked my page. All right. Okay. I like, I like them. And that'll gain you followers. It's just, yeah, it's a whole like. Wow. whole different world when you look at it like that even pages like you know if you wanted to tomo um with your instagram page you could effectively sell your page to someone for quite a bit of money how, much? how many followers have you got uh, how many followers have you got about seventy thousand or something probably a couple of grand <laughs> yes yeah. Crazy because some brand somewhere, you know, something. <laughs> so, but that's the thing. That's the thing. It's it's all about money. It's some brand somewhere who making I don't know headphones will go right. That's seventy thousand people. If we just buy his account, change it, we've got seventy thousand people there ready ready to go. An that's audience. Scary, isn't it? It's, that's mad. it's becoming a weird place. What would you say? Do, do you use any other <clears throat> social media as hell? What? No, I've uh, I've got Facebook, but I actually deleted like my personal Facebook account when I was probably 17, 18. So again, I just got to that point where I was like, this is taking so many hours of my day because I'm so addicted to it. It's the first thing I look at when I get into bed and, you know, when I when I get up in the morning, it sort of gets me out of bed. It's all, I, I find myself doing that with Instagram as well. Like, yeah. When I was on intergalactic, I was waking up at like half four to go to work. And, you know, you're lying there in bed, you're thinking, oh, something's got to get me out of bed. So you just you're on your phone immediately and you're flicking through things. And it's almost like Instagram provides a bit of like aggravation or something to sort of get me up. It sort of gets me thinking. It's sort of it's a way of not falling back to sleep. But it, it's I find that it annoys me more than anything. It sets me up negatively. So I don't know why I do it. It's It's just mm-hmm. really weird. And yet at the same time, it's it's a great thing because it's opened up loads of doors and you know if I didn't have that I wouldn't necessarily get the jobs that I do and it, you know so it's it's really half six or one half a dozen of the other and it it's not a it's not a huge layout criticism of it it's just it's just more a sort of a fear of what it's doing to people I mean I used to have snapchat when I was a kid but I don't have that now because I just think it's just another thing that's going to attract me to my phone mm. And that was one of my resolutions this year, was to just try and be on my phone a bit less. Sorry about that, guys. I'll, I'll put a little break in there. We had a little uh, technical difficulty on my end because we're absolute noobs at this. <laughs> Andy's getting his... Um, he's got a bloody jam sani in the corner of his room as a router. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just back and I'm back now. Nicking it from the local <laughs> schools. Did, did, did your mum have to make a call for the white wireless? <laughs> <laughs> and he's still got dial up. Shut <laughs> up, leave me alone. Um, sorry, so we, where we were at, so we were talking um, a little bit about, uh, you were saying about being addicted to Instagram. That's where I could hear you last and waking yeah. up. Yeah, well, it just, it's, 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 I think it's not a question of, 
necessarily an addiction on my end it's just more that I'm aware that I look at it and I guess it is an addiction but immediately I'm on the defensive there saying no I'm not addicted yeah well and that's but what an addiction is and literally yeah. before like five ten minutes before I was on this call I had a quick shower and I was brushing my teeth my wife was getting ready to go for the her, her daily allotted one hour exercise and um I was brushing my teeth my wife came in to go let me brush mine and then just instantly went what are you doing on your phone while you're brushing your teeth? I didn't I even realise. Yeah. Wow, and she's yeah. like, well, she'll go yeah. mad at me for being on my phone. But then she's on hers. All, like, we both do it quite a lot. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it annoys me when she's doing it. And it annoys her when I'm doing it. But it's like, I think that's why, Ellen. I think it's because we both don't want to admit that yeah. we're, we're both addicted to, to our phones and to, yeah. to social media mainly because that's what we're on. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. I'm I'm gonna really try and not use it as much though, because it's I hate the thought of being addicted to something, but particularly something that I'm and also as well with all this fake news stuff that's been happening. And I think a lot of it is scaremongering. I think it's a way of really frightening people into sort of submission, into a way of, you know, following one one way of thinking or, you know. Yeah. It's so hard to know what's real and what isn't. And, and in many ways, it's so great that we have our own news platform to be able to tell each other what's going on. And we know that what we're hearing is, you know, possibly true and correct because we're hearing it from each other as opposed to, you know, who knows who's paying for what and, and what views they want to be, you know, spread. Mm. So yes. it's it's a it's a real tricky one. But, yeah, I think um, I think it is a really positive thing in so many ways. But I, I just worry about you know I think being a, being a woman I worry about really young girls and the effect it will have on them and in a few years time if they're all aggressive and if you know like this pressure to look a certain way if people forget that everyone's got a filter now everyone's got these airbrushing apps no, mm. none of it's real and, think- and certainly what oh. they're up to isn't real either you know, no one said, didn't get out of bed today, stayed indoors. You know, no yeah. one says that. Didn't brush my teeth until, what time did you brush your teeth, Andy? Did you say two o'clock? <laughs> yeah. Bear in mind, mate, I'm up at six o'clock in the morning with two kids. We uh, sat down uh, and we're doing this and that. It gets to like the middle of the day and you're like, oh yeah, I'm not a shower yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm probably on Facebook a lot of it. I've used, I've used both got an iPhone. Uh, yeah. yeah. Let's do the... Uh, Let's see how long we've we've been on social media today. Do you know how to do it? Not a clue. Go on. All you do is slide. Well, a minute. There we go. Slide it to the left. Yeah. Right. And you get screen time. Oh, I haven't. So. So you get your phone. Yeah. Let me unblur this. This is not interesting for anyone who's who's just <laughs> one. Uh, unblur- <laughs> right. So you slide your phone to. So you get the, your little notifications and that. Or you can do it, you know, like you get that screen. Screen time, I've got it, I've got it. Yeah. So go on, how, how much social networking have you done today? It says there, zero on mine. What's it on yours, Elle? What's screen time? I'm struggling to find it. I've got, I'm, I've gone on Instagram and I've gone on Insights. Oh, uh, no, your activity. Oh, so it's, no, it's just on, you, on your phone itself. Is it an iPhone, now? Yeah. Yeah. So just on your on your main sort of like screen, yeah. Just kind of swipe it to the. Is it the left? It says you've got to set it up. Look. Oh right, okay. If you've got to set it up, then we've got. Oh uh, right, okay. I'll <laughs> do that later though. But but on my Instagram today, for instance, it says yeah. forty six minutes with a daily average of fifty one. How are you finding that? Out? Let's. Okay. So if you go on if you go on your Instagram and then click on the, the, the three, three lines. horizontal lines yeah. and then go on to uh, your activity. Yeah. And then it says time on Instagram. Mine says 51 minutes daily average. And that was in the last week. But today it's only at 46. If you press on the day of the week, it'll tell you a number of pop up. My, my average is two hours and 11 minutes a day. Wow. Oh my gosh. Like on, on Sunday. So on Sunday, I was 46 minutes. So, how do I find my my thing? So, go on your Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> this is really great. 
Great fun. <laughs> People do this, learn. This is the thing. Go on. Go on to your Instagram. Yeah. Press the profile. Yeah. Go to the three horizontal lines, top right. Yeah. Your activity. Oh, yeah, your activity. Oh. Have you? My daily average is nine minutes. What? I'm not gonna That's lie. amazing. I, but if that was Facebook, it would probably be like in the hours. Like I, I'm not a big. I don't really use Instagram that much, really. I put the odd photo uh, on, but okay. Facebook's the one for me. Like, What's I. What's your favorite one, Elle, of all time? Your favorite social media platform? It'd probably be Instagram, since it's the only one I've used as a as a grown up. Um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I'd, I'd say I'd say it was that. I mean, I did like Facebook when I had it, but again, just the amount of time that it took up of my day. And if I look at that and I think, geez, if I've spent 40 minutes on Instagram this morning and I, I couldn't tell you a single thing that I've looked at or done mm. today. On, yeah, on, it's on, weird, on isn't it? But I, I do think that Instagram is quite a friendly place. Really? I think compared to Twitter, that's why I've come off Twitter. Yeah. Twitter, yeah. It's very rare that I... That, that I get any stick on on um, Instagram. One, there was a guy messaging me the other day, and he it said so he's a football fan, and he said something about football. He was a Scunthorpe United fan, and he said something, but he said something that's like so nasty, like horrible. And I said to him, I was like, why why do you feel like you can say that to someone who you don't know? And he was like, just a bit of footy banter, innit? I was like, well, I I, I wouldn't, you wouldn't say that to me in the street. So yeah. why why do you feel like you can say it on social media? You see, I that's, think, the only pro- that's the only real problem I've had in, in a long time on Twitter. Instagram, sorry. You see, that's the anon- anonymity of it, isn't it? I think with Twitter, because all you've got is your profile picture, there's so much more anonymity where people, c- people can hide behind it. Instagram's a little bit less because you're constantly putting photos of yourself or what you're mm. doing. Or- and then Facebook... Poached eggs, mainly. Yeah, for you, poached eggs. Facebook poached used eggs. to be kind of like... You'd never, I remember like, you know, you'd never like argue with anyone on Facebook or like have different uh, opinions where now Facebook's just a battlefield for, you know. Yeah. Well, you're yeah. terrible for that though, and I am terrible <laughs> for that because I'm a man who's <laughs> left there. There's, there's been a few times when I thought, oh, I'm going to have to delete him or mute yeah. him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, again, I am, I do get, kind of get into that because, because I've got a strong kind of political preference and yeah, things annoy me and I'm like, yeah, yeah. What sort of things did you put on Facebook, Al? God, we're talking years ago. We're talking ten years ago. Um, but at the time, it was just probably. me getting pissed with my mates. You know, <laughs> probably just really terrible bitches. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I, I guess it was Facebook was different then. It was less sort of about posting pictures of yourself. It was more like I don't know. It was the beginning of your mates being able to tag you in things i don't know i don't know um yeah yeah. because going back to what you were saying before um about it being a fad see i think that because you go well msn kind of what lasted from say 2002 to 2006 and then you know myspace if you had that myspace MySpace. when bebo came and went Uh, pixel Like, I've had a Facebook account now probably since I was about 18, so probably, like, 11, getting on 12 years now. That's yeah, I bet you've got more friends on Facebook than you have followers on Instagram, haven't you? What's that? I said I bet you've got more friends on Facebook than you have followers. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I don't know. Like, that's what kind of... Not worries me, because I, I do enjoy Facebook when it's all right, when it's kind of... Do you know what I mean? But it mm. does piss me off sometimes, and it annoys me how much I'm looking at it, but... I don't know, is it a fad? Are kids still going on Facebook? I know a lot of kids do TikTok now, which is another yeah. one. I, can't get near I, that. Got, yeah. I haven't got into <laughs> I'm that yet. I've got TikTok in a minute. I love it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what it is. What do, you, what do you do? It's basically just videos. But then, like you've just said, Al, going back to young girls and having filters and things like that, I, what I've noticed on TikTok is this very, the girls are very perfect and a lot of it, well, you can really start to, I've only, I only joined it yesterday, so I've really started to fill it, but there's a lot of, a lot of girls wearing hardly any clothes, doing dances, but they're all perfect in the face, and it's like, like, you, you, you're not really, 
you're not seeing many girls with no makeup on or any filters and stuff like that. So it's kind of a, that that could go to the problem of what you was, about what you were saying about girls feeling like they need to be perfect all the time. Yeah, and it's such a younger audience as well. Like Instagram's got that slightly older audience where like I've got like a cousin who's about nine, ten, and she's on TikTok all the time. Yeah. But that's the thing as well, is that all, all these people that put up videos of their kid, like, really, without being, I, I sound like such a kind of middle-aged person saying this, but can you really watch what your kids are putting up there? And if your little girl is, is dancing in her little summer dress, which isn't a lot, and is, you know, provocatively twerking away, can, yeah. you, can you guarantee who is watching that? Can you monitor it? Can you make sure that she's safe? Because that's that's another thing that worries me about it. But it's yeah. Yeah, I guess kind of monitoring it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, I've got a friend, my <clears> mate <throat> Stav and Kirsty. They've got three young daughters, and two of them use TikTok a lot. But I know theirs is private. But I guess right. I, d- I don't know. Like I, I don't know if that's a thing with TikTok. I don't know how it works. But yeah, I mean, that, and, and I, I've said this on the podcast before, and and, and again, it, it comes back to to what you were saying, Eleanor, like worrying as a as a as a woman about other sort of girls and stuff. I've got two little girls, and not well, about a year or so ago, my eldest wanted to start a YouTube channel, and she's only five now, so she must have only been four. Oh. So just like. Like she she what she didn't say I want to start a YouTube channel but she was she was like talking to an audience so she was literally like playing with her toys but going okay guys so this is how you do this and da, da, da. and I was like what are you doing Phoebs and she was like oh, I'm doing YouTube dad and but uh... is that is that the generation of kids changing no because I used to do I remember doing that when I was a kid and I think that's what kind of got me into acting I remember my mum. Bought me. It wasn't my mum actually. It was my nana. Bought me this little. Well, you were talking bag. to your family that was in the room. You'd do little shows. Yeah. Or yeah, that exactly. You do little shows for your family. Like say, my nana bought me this little camera, and I remember making her a video with it, like just chatting. But like, whenever I used this camera, it would be, I'd, I'd be making my own little show, mm. and that kind of inspired me. So I didn't want to kind of tell my little girl no. We didn't go and open a freaking YouTube account or anything, but. I just got her a little camera and she just makes her own little videos now that just stay on that camera. You yeah. know what I mean? But wasn't there a little kid who's, I think he's only three or something. I've probably got this completely wrong knowing me telling you the wrong facts, but he made something like two million last year from mm. reviewing kids' toys. Yeah. Is it Ryan Ryan made like toy reviews, reviews isn't well. it? <laughs> you are, I missed that. You cracked up. He's called Ryan. My little, he's Ryan. got like a Nickelodeon show now that my little girl watches. He's got. Like, he's getting more work than us, guys. He's getting more work than us. <laughs> he's one of the he's one of the richest people in the world, and he's only like I think he's like maybe five <laughs> in the world. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Is yeah, I think he's really worth scary? like a, a crazy. Also, look. There's another thing of if we I don't have kids, but if you put up um, pictures of your kids on on social media or what have you, I've got a mate who tags. Um, what is it? It's um. A, toddler influencer is one of her hashtags which like, just immediately makes me go oh! but yeah also all those pictures are then owned by facebook or owned by instagram and they will always be findable so when your kid is 25 and this isn't a thing anymore and they're going for a work interview a picture of them in the paddling pool can be brought up like that it's just mm. there's just something about it which yeah. and, and also what i feel what i feel really conflicted about is the minute that you bring it up and say actually I don't know what I think about that you immediately come across as a prude or you immediately come across as like a sort of you know overly overly sensitive overly protective or... overly protective boring sort of you know and and, and, and it's <clears throat> I wouldn't I wouldn't consider myself to be that but I'm it's just a worry that I have but I feel like the minute you bring it up and that's an insecurity of mine not knowing enough about social media but from what I do know about it these and my worries about it but I, I do feel that sort of I'm already worrying that I'm going to get criticized yeah. for speaking out against it and I, I can't I think oh that can't be healthy that can't be a good thing do you that- worry about what the reaction might be if you before you post on if you put something on Instagram or whatever do you worry about what the reaction might be no not really because I know that things like 
I, I, I'm just not very good at it at the end of the day. So I don't really, I try not to hashtag too much. And I know that the people who follow me are normally people who are genuinely interested in what I'm doing. So not, it's quite a positive place, like you said, Tomo. It's rare that I get grief. Mm. But yeah, there'll be some people that will suddenly send like a, a really horrible message for some unknown reason. And then you can't help but focus on that. And it's it's just, a, it's. I, I wouldn't say I worry about it, but at the end of the day, it, it is something that I then check all the time. I think, why do I care? Why yeah. am I doing this? Why am I yeah. outside enjoying the sun or chatting to someone or, you know, reading a book, doing something that's going to get my mind going as opposed to numb it, which I think Instagram does for me. It just sends me into this hole of staring at a, a screen. It's just a weird thing. Social media is weird. It's like with this TikTok, because I've only just joined it. Literally, I was recording this on what day are we on now? Tuesday? Mm-hmm. <laughs> No, I, just, I just don't even think about days anymore. But yeah, we're, we're on today, whatever day it is. Guys. And I'm like, already I'm thinking of ways in a weird way. I'm thinking of what I can do on TikTok to be to make it to make it become popular. And people yeah. be like, oh, Tomo's on TikTok and he, he's doing this thing and he's funny. or he's doing, And it's kind of like, is it like a self-indulgence thing? or? But then again, it is goes, it, you, you're I, naturally an entertainer, so yeah. you should feel that way. But I think really? it's inbred in you as well because you're self-employed. So much of that is finding your own work and proving that you're current and proving that you've got something to show or that you can be different, that you can show that side of you, that you can, you know, again, yep. maintain your popularity. And that is ingrained in you as an actor who's had to fight yep. for auditions, who's had to fight to get roles and jobs and not knowing what that next one is going to be. It's inbuilt in you to keep yourself current and popular. Mm. Can you earn money from TikTok, Andy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah, I think right. so. I'm, well, yeah, I'm sure you will be. That's what. I'm that's that's the goal of all social media now is is to to get you earning money through your followers because it gets the, it pushes the social media platform bigger and bigger. Well, I've got I think six followers now on TikTok, so oh, get ready. Wow. You've really got more than I have on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to take off. It's basically just going to be me in my back garden, either playing golf or playing football. Or... The golf one that you put up the other day was impressive. Getting it into a watering can. Yeah, I ain't shared that yet though. Mm, but I mean, you have got a good shot with stuff like that. Yeah, I'm practice. good. I, I can. I know what I'm doing, mate. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Don't worry about me. You worry about your TikTok share. Don't set ever... ideas. Do you, Do you ever think that way, then, Eleanor? With With you, Instagram and stuff. Do you Do you see it as that's your brand yeah it's it's a work thing there's there's not really anything personal on there I try and give bits so that people know I'm a human at the end of the day I don't want them to follow me just because yeah I want them to see that it is me and that it is a sort of account because as well that's another thing if it's just all work 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 then people don't the whole point of Instagram is that people feel like they know you they feel like they've got access to you they can message you whatever it's for me it's more of a thing of it is a career thing I have it as a way of furthering acting work which is what I want to be known for but there are there are a couple of pictures of my personal life and my home life on there because they're nice points that I want to share with people and I want people to know me as well as my career and and the jobs that I do but it's yeah it's a fine line I'm not really sure that I've got it right but I'm trying you know but it's yeah it's just tough it's just yeah. real tough but someone said to me once they said um it was another actor and I said to him how come you're not on social media and he said because if I go on social media and I'm sharing everything about my life when it comes to me playing a character some people might struggle to believe the character that I'm playing because they've seen me yeah. on Instagram making poached eggs or playing golf in the garden or they know they'll know they know me as a person so they might then struggle to see the characters that I'm playing so it's like you said, Al, it's kind of a fine line between keeping it very personal and keeping it. Because I'd say mine's more personal than work. I, oh yeah, I would mm-hmm. mine as well. But I think that's my thing with social media. I've never, I've never really thought of it as a work thing. Um, it's great for sharing work, particularly yeah. the podcast and things like that. It's a good thing to get your creativeness out there. But yeah, it's 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 a strange thing, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it is a weird one. It is a weird one. But are you using it more now during quarantine than you would if you was working, Al? Well, 
when I'm working, I, my phone is always in my trailer. It's never on me because I find that I can't properly get in the headspace or can't properly. I'm a bit. Like that. I don't take my phone on to set either. No, you never have your phone on set, do you, Tommy? <laughs> um, I've been in. I've been in the year 1988 with you on your fucking phone. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Al, sorry. So you leave your phone in the trailer most of the time so you just sort of like, so you can zone out. Yeah. Um, so I'd say I probably am on it a bit more than normal, yeah. But I'm also aware of that to try and not to have it with me all the time. But I, it annoys me because I'll just be chatting to someone or about to have dinner and I look down and there's my phone and it's me who's put it there. Yeah. And I'm like, why have I got that with me? Why, why am I giving out that message? Why is it on the table when we're having dinner? Mm. You know, that's that's horrible it's so rude because it just tells everyone else that actually that's more important and it's not mm. and what it, yeah. you said before like kind of got me when you said you know about like even in the days of msn when you could have been in the next room with your family spending yeah time. and it's so true like i remember times because my grandma used to have a pc upstairs and i'd go around to my grandma's and i'd sit there and be on msn all night yeah and then yeah there's my grandma now she's gone it's like shit I should have spent yeah. that time with grandma but now yeah. I'm in the same thing like you know I find myself now especially in quarantine watching a film with my little girl and I just do that and then I look yeah. up like what's happened to Poppy from Trolls now like do you know what I mean it's gone yeah yeah sharing yeah. experience and it is so yeah. horrible it is an addiction at the end it of the day is an do, you th- do you think you'd be able to manage about your phone oh I'd love to try it. I'd love to... Like Ed Sheeran, he had a year out. If not on his phone? Yeah, no, he, he never had a phone for a year. Wow. But again, Ed Sheeran doesn't have to worry about work. This is the thing. Yeah. If, if I was Ed Sheeran, I'd go, yeah, I'll leave my phone. Because, do you know what yeah. I mean? You don't have to worry about work. Like, one of my mates, he bought... You can buy dumb phones now. Have you seen them? You can so buy what? Instead of a smartphone, you can buy a dumb phone. So it literally lets you ring people and lets you access email, and that's it. You can't really go on the internet, can't download apps. So you could effectively use it to, to do our job. Your agent can ring you, you can get your emails, you can see the scripts that she send, they send, etc. cetera. Um, and my mate did it, well, he bought like an old Nokia, and he was like, right, I'm just going to, on a weekend, I'm just going to have my Nokia. He's an actor as well. And I was like, yeah, I'd want to do that, but there's still that little bit of me, I guess, that's like, even though my agents never rang on a Saturday or I've never received an audition note on a Saturday or a Sunday, there's still that little bit of my head going, I need to be connected. I need to know yeah. that if I'm, you know, so it's, it's hard, isn't it? Ed Sheeran doesn't have that worry, does he? Well, that's the thing, you know, so much of phones are work now. You know, that's yeah. why we are on them more than ever. Like all, all my emails come through to my phone. I'm on it much more than anything else. You know, it's almost like laptops and iPads are totally replacing computers as well. Mm. But it's it's just it's just yeah, I think it's just it's just natural. And also, I think I think going back to just what we were saying about like you wish you'd been chatting to your grandma in the in the other room when really you were upstairs on MSN. That's just, it's sort of a part of life. It's part of growing up and realizing who you want to be and looking back on things like that. But yeah, that's my point, is that I've spent hours and hours, probably days and months of my life, staring at a computer screen when I could have just been having human conversation. And it, 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 there's nothing more irritating to me than if I'm talking to someone and, and they're looking at their phone. Or even if we're watching a film, like you were saying, and they're looking at their phone, I just think, why are we doing it? Why don't we just turn the film off and just sit here and look at our phone? You know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm exactly the same, because that's like... Like nine out of ten at times of me and my wife bicker, it's over that exact thing. Yeah. In a film, and she'll look at a phone, or I'll look at my phone. And it's like, what, yeah. what, are you doing? what are you doing? Yeah. Watching this, and it's I like. I quite like to try a thing where I just like the minute I have like an hour or something a day to sort of, or like I don't know, like a, a moment where I can go back and look at it. But when I'm with people, when I'm talking to people, it's away from me. Like, like, or certainly when you come in from work of an evening. Mm. If you need to do your work, that's the thing. Like you need to separate your phone so it's a different thing. Yeah. So like maybe you do your work on your laptop, but you basically the minute you come in from work, you just put your phone down and turn it off or something. But it, yeah. Like you say, you never know. You know, I, I, you know, again, I've had my my agents message me before at like seven o'clock at night, going, right, 
you need to have yeah. this in by tomorrow morning. That does happen. 25 page monologue, London yeah. tomorrow. Go. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I've got an American agent as well, and they, of course, are working when we go to bed. Yeah. So in the middle of the night, you know, you'll get an email saying you've got a self date for tomorrow, and you're like, oh, it's great, thanks. But you know, <laughs> it's it's that kind of thing. It's just blooming. It's it's a minefield because it's so difficult to find a, an alternative way. Mm. Or to be you, brave enough to say no. Do you read your scripts on your phone, now? No, I have hard copies of them because I yeah. like to make notes on it. Yeah, I'm the same. Say so like, even say if I've got if I have an audition. If you had an audition, would you re- learn it on your phone or would you print it out? I'd write it out. You'd write it out. Yeah, because it helps me. I take out all the punctuation, so it, I can put it in myself and make sense of it myself, and then it helps me learn it as well. Nice, That's interesting. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I can't learn it on my phone. I have to print. Uh, it don't go in for me. No. No. It's a little bit easier on an iPad because it's a bit bigger and it's a bit more like paper. But yeah. I never forget the first time I went into an audition with an iPad. You've been to an audition with an iPad? Yeah, but everyone does that now, right? I don't know. I've never well, done, I've that. Never done I, that. I've, I've only I've only ever just bought my first iPad the other day. Quite a lot of actors now. I've seen it recently. Quite a lot of actors go in with an iPad, and I mean it's better because you're not. You know, you know, you're saving paper, you're saving trees. Well done, it's, it is good. Um, even like read-throughs now, I've seen actors with iPads again for that reason. Um, but I remember the first time I ever done it, it was when like I got the first iPad years ago, and like the casting director was a bit like, "Oh, oh, okay, that's." And I, and after that, I was just like, "Yeah, oh, it's been a good year, has it?" Someone's that's it, yeah. And it was just, <laughs> no, like, you know what I mean? It was like, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, awkward, yeah. Yeah, it makes yeah. it a bit weird. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, that won't go in for me. That. How um, do you guys learn it then? What, what do you do? I just don't a lot of the time. <laughs> You've seen it first hand. I just don't. I, just don't. <laughs> I am. <laughs> when I get to, I have to print it out normally. I have to print it out. Get in a hot bath. That's my little place yeah. where I learn in a bath. Nice. And I find doing stupid voices helps me learn the lines. Yeah. So, like okay. I read it out loud, yeah. like out loud in like daft voices. No matter what the scene is, that will help me learn the lines, yeah. and then I'll learn. Then I'll start reading it in a character and learn the character and stuff like that. When Just because I'm. You do, do you do a lot of self tape auditions where you take yourself? I've got a mate who helps me, which I'm quite lucky with. Yeah, and is it does is it always that mate that helps you? Because I I do it with my brother, and I can't do it with anyone else. I get so in my head about it, and so anxious oh, really? and nervous. Yeah, in that it has strange to just though, be actor. one person. Yeah, I think it's just because I hate self-taping so much and I always feel like such a dick for taking up someone else's time and, and, and also I'm so pedantic about exactly how I want it. It can take hours, but it has to just be with my brother and then we, we, do, we have a shorthand for it. We just do it really quickly and it's done. And I, I, I don't mind helping other people at all. I'm more than happy to do that, but it's, it's just when I have to do it myself, I have this system and it's... Yeah, I can't bear doing it with other people. It's weird. Yeah, no, luckily I've got a mate who um, is an actor, who was talking about before with the phone, he's an actor as well, and he's set up like he does photography, so he's set up like a little photography studio. So mm. I go around there normally and we shoot it there, but there has been the odd time where I've had to ask my wife to help and she, she hates it. <laughs> oh, it's so awkward sometimes. Yeah, I it's horrible. Yeah. I remember we asked about our honeymoon. It was like our it was our first full day of our honeymoon because we went over to America. So like the first day we got there, we just slept because we were in LA and the time difference made knocked you out. Um, so it was the first full day, and my agent had emailed through the night there, like you were saying before, and um, they were like, "Yeah, we know it's your honeymoon, but like, can you can you do this self tape for for today?" So. I am <laughs> really sorry, babe. Oh, unless it's Spielberg, do one. <laughs> That's amazing. I love that you did that. that yeah, no, good on you, mate. Good on you. That, it was you get... good. I can't remember what it was, but it was something. It was something worth doing on my honeymoon. I wouldn't have done it if it was like you know. Yeah. Shit. You wouldn't have done it if it was like intergalactic or something like that. Yeah. 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 I remember I did one once. It was for. It was for. You know that Jason Momoa film? Is it C? The new one, C, where everyone's yeah, blind. Yeah, 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 something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's called C, and uh, I was doing it, and I, I was pretending to be like I was obviously the character blind, so I'm being blind. I'm being blind, and I'm like reading this Braille thing with this weird American accent, 
and uh, halfway through it, I sort of lose my head. And halfway through, you just see me go, oh, fuck this, and punch my laptop. Oh, my <laughs> God. You start, sort of see my laptop just fall off the ironing board, which is what I'll prop it up on. Like, my my uh, agent must get my cell tapes and just be like... Oh, did you send that? No, 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 obviously not. No, I, I have done that, though. I went downstairs, had a, had a cup of tea and a fag and chilled out a bit and then went back to it. But, like, some of the cell tapes that I send, God, like, I, I'm just not, I'm just not very good at them. Just not very good at them. I have sent my email me back and said, really good, but at the end of it, I can hear you like shouting at yourself. So I've sent the wrong oh, bit. And it's like, it's I've done the oh, audition. No, 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 it's fucking shit. Like, it's fucking shit. Turn it off. Turn it off. Let's do I it again. I sent my agent one where I'm punching my laptop. Like, <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. Um, have you done much theatre, Elle? Have you ever done any theatre? I've done, I did a play. Uh, yeah, I did a play at the Mill at Sonning when I was about 18. Um, but that's about it, really, because I'm absolutely terrified of it. Terrified? Uh, well, you've been yeah. doing it. You, you, what, what was it? How old was you when you started? You was really young, wasn't you? 11. And that was on? That was on a thing called um, Falling. And then I did a film called The Illusionist when I was 12, which sort of Great. got me a sort of jumping block, as whatever you call that. Um but yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't done. Um, I haven't done a lot because it is mainly just fear that gets in the way for me. Um, yeah, and, and scary. Yeah, and also I think it's just a completely different skill set, isn't it? You know, I don't think I could project so that the back of a theatre auditorium can hear me. I just don't. I don't think I've got it. But mm. I would love to try it. But it's it's just a thing of you know, true fear. And also doing the same thing every night would get a bit scary for me. I think. Yeah, as well. I think it would get boring. Yeah, but also so much of the satisfaction for me comes from a big scene and ticking it off and thinking, right, that's done. And mm. I've done the best I can do with it. To have to do that every night would drive yeah. me mad. But also one, one thing that does really piss me off is um, in the West End in London, the theatre prices. It's the price. I mean, that's mad. That's insane because if, if like, for instance, Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, that's probably average 90 quid a ticket for the cheapest ticket you can Which get. Which is mind-blowing. But who who does Harry Potter appeal to if not young kids and families? So what you're exactly. talking, what average family of four, 90 quid a ticket, that's without food, that's without getting there. If, if they don't live in London, that's accommodation. Mm. You're talking about a grand for a night for a family. And it's over oh, two probably. days or two nights in it, that one. Yeah. You have to watch it in two parts. parts. Oh, you yeah. have to watch it in two parts. Yeah, so you're it's talking a like quid per part per ticket. So you're mm. talking two grand if you went for, if you went and did it all. Like you can yeah. you go you can go Cuba for two weeks for that. I don't yeah. think you well, it depends, yeah, it depends where you stay and stuff like that, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Stay yeah. yeah. in the travel lodge in Cuba, you'd be all right. No, I mean if you got one. <laughs> oh, it, oh, it, 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 oh, I thought it was on that in <laughs> Cuba. <laughs> it was expensive, but it wasn't like two grand, but it was but we did it over two different nights. Was so it was like... You done? Did you do the Harry Potter thing? Yeah. <laughs> I've never seen a Harry Potter. Well, I love Harry Potter and our good friend Jack wrote it. So you've got to go and support him, haven't you? Do you know what oh, I mean? Jack Thorne wrote that. Oh, you've worked with Jack Thorne, haven't you, Elle? Okay, Have you worked with Jack Thorne? Oh, he's a writer. Oh, he's, he's just he's writing everything. At the he minute. writes, yeah. You probably, yeah. Oh, yeah. we'll do the favour to me. Um, give him a call and tell him to write something for me when he unemployed me <laughs> when COVID's <laughs> over. Um, yeah, no, um, that just it just annoys me that because I think as well we should be trying to encourage young people to go to the theatre more. Right. And if it's that expensive, we just won't. You know, especially with things like Netflix being now eight quid a month on your telly, you don't have to leave your front room. Is there anything expensive. um is there anything good on Netflix at the minute, Elle, would you say? Yeah, there is actually. There's this amazing, amazing film. Um it's called <laughs> This Is England. <laughs> uh, no, we didn't make it. We never made uh, it. I no, but um, I must say that um, the, the it's love wedding repeating it. It's great. Yeah. It's a great oh, look. Thanks, thanks. I love it. It was mad filming that. I think I think it was a whole kind of. It was the director's first time directing. He's just written before, and he wrote Death at a Funeral before that, which is amazing. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. And Love Wedding Repeat was great to do because it's 
such a mismatch of all those different people and you've got loads of comedy stars who just improvise the whole thing and do whatever they want and then you've yeah. got people like me who are terrified of impro so you're just like oh, I'm going to stick to the script and what you're saying makes no sense because you're not responding to anyone <laughs> but um it's yeah, it it really good yeah it was really good fun but I think initially it was this idea that it would be five different scenarios and then we basically just ran out of time when we were filming it so they ended up with loads of like random material and had to like piece it together wow. so it's, it, I think it it, it works in a kind of really weird way I, I find it quite stressful to watch it, did, it, did you did you see it before it went on Netflix then yeah, yeah yeah but they they ended up doing about three or four different cuts of it before they decided on the final one because we had so much material yeah um I think yeah, the casting is great. Like I love Joel Fry. It's yeah. Tim, Tim Key. Tim Key. Tim Key. Yeah. Tim he's, and uh, is it? A, how do you pronounce Aisling's name? Is it Aisling? Ashling. Ashling. She's. Was it? Was it that then that was doing a lot of the improvising? I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 And they're just great. You know, it's amazing because I I hadn't really done a comedy for a long time. In fact, with Georgia Groom, um, your pal. Yeah. In Angus Thongs, I worked with her. That's sort of the last comedy that I did, but that's. 10 years ago is that so, how long ago that was yeah well I was 15 I'm 27 now nearly 28 so 12 yeah. years ago then yeah um we would have been what yeah it would have been around similar time as this, this is England isn't it? oh no maybe that's a bit longer now a couple of years after I think yeah yeah but me and Georgia are born on exactly the same day are you yeah 11th of February 92 uh, this is a useless nugget of information just go <laughs> back to the uh, the theatre things what's the best show you've seen at the theatre um people places and things with denise goff good unbelievable oh my god absolutely unbelievable i loved it really why yeah. what was the well, message i did a film called colette with denise goff and we got stranded at an airport together on the way home and we're filming in hungary and um I just got chatting to her and she was one of those people that I found so inspiring in the two hours that I was just sat chatting to her in the airport. She said that she was going over to do the run of this show, People, Places and Things that I'd missed when it was in London. So I'm going to do the, the transfer in New York, um, in Brooklyn. And I just booked tickets that day. Nice. And I, I went to New York to Bloomin' Well See It. That's how inspiring you went to I found New York. Her. Yeah, I went for a weekend with my brother. And we had such a laugh, and oh my god, it was brilliant. It's it was one of the best decisions ever, because so much of I think acting is that is inspiration from other people mm. and finding that that heartbeat that makes you want to keep going, because it's so cutthroat and it's so tri- difficult and tricky. But to actually find someone that you think is brilliant that you would travel all travel that way, the world to it's go a bit of way in it, yeah. Yeah. It took Charlotte it, a lot to get to New York. <laughs> really? oh, Charlotte, so much. like I reckon after after six months of being together, she was like, "Oh, I love New York. We should go." And I'm like, "Oh, yeah." And then it, it took her eleven years, and we went last year. Oh, and do you know what? I loved it. Yeah. But we didn't get to see a show because, like what you've just said, like it's so expensive. We went to yeah. see. I think we went to see how much the tickets for Frozen. I think it was Frozen. We might have. She, Charlotte wanted to see something like that. Um. And it, yeah, I think it was like hundred and twenty dollars a ticket yeah. for a Tuesday afternoon. Yeah, it's yeah, like, but it's you know, it's just it's crap because it just means that so many so many kids won't get into it, and then it, if it's something that they never do, they never will. Mm. You know. Yeah, they'll never do it when they're older. Something never... that gets phased out, they need to sort it out. They need to make it more accessible because it's it's just becoming elitist, and and you know it's a real shame because it's a great art form that people just aren't seeing enough of because they can't afford to go and that's that's ridiculous everyone should be able to go and see mm-hmm. plays in the west end and across across wherever they are you know just because it's in in london in town it doesn't mean you add a naught to the price tag it's just mad yeah it's bizarre isn't it yeah bizarre. um i think we're right about the time that we'll uh we'll wrap, wrap yeah. up and we've had a Great little chat. Really, really boring chatting to you both. So, thanks so much. <laughs> it's been really shit. Delete my number. Really crap. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't yeah. record this one then. <laughs> I said, I'm glad I didn't record this one then. It's just been a nice chat. Getting lonely in isolation. 
Uh, How are you coping with it? Just quickly before we stop, how are you coping with um, the isolation? What's what's your day to day routine? You know what? It's actually been fine. So I'm um, with my boyfriend's family in Cobb, and it's lush. I was with my mum. The best family. This wasn't going to happen. The best family. They are the best family. So we're just we're just having a real laugh. You know, we're just sitting out in the garden and just you know doing a lot of drinking. Nice. it's pretty nice but it, yeah it's just um I had the work panic I had the work angst the other day that sort of started creeping in just a bit of like oh god what are we doing like when's the next thing gonna be and you know people are now saying September things won't get started until but I had a message from my owner Tomo just saying that um that she's absolutely no idea what they're gonna do they're gonna like try and cut some of it together and see what they need but she she just says it's in the lap of the gods so yeah yeah it's bizarre so for people who are listening me and Elle we was in it was an eight month job we finished it it was three weeks early we finished obviously because of the current situation and it's like I kind of left us in a position where we was just like what's going to happen what are we going to do with it 10 episodes and we only managed to shoot like eight and a half so nine so we don't have a finale or anything so now they sort of have to edit it together or do they go back and do reshoots can they afford to because if nothing's going until September, you know, it's mad. I want to know what happens as well when things like, you know, the soaps that have been on that haven't ever had a break since they started this. Yeah. What happens when they run out? And well, they've started to be less out of it now. Yeah, there was, they've gone from five a week to two a week now. Yeah. Oh, so they've more than half it sometimes. What I want to know is, like, are they going to make reference to it when it does come back? I was thinking this. Are they going to do, like, a... a, a something in Coro and EastEnders about what's going on. And then, as well, me and my, miss- my missus said this last night, and I felt it a couple of weeks ago, have you guys started watching stuff yet? Like, stuff on Netflix and stuff like that? And you'll see people hugging, and you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Ooh, yeah, on the next, I was doing it last night. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That hasn't suited me at all, God. Yeah, I was watching The Nest last night, even though I know that it was filmed six months ago. I was watching The Nest last night, and I'm like, oh, God, they're close, aren't they? Or, like, they're passing something. It's like, in my head, I'm like, well, that needs wiping. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's weird how it's creeping in. That's what's going on. I watched Contagion the other day. Have you seen Contagion? Mm. No, watch it. Not while this is going on. It's a really good film, but it really makes you feel like, because everything it's all about touching things and passing things and it's so it was made something like 10 years ago but it's so weirdly linked to the situation that's going on now it's yeah. so weird well, it's, it's just like a well world worth pandemic watch. isn't it and it's like yeah. but like Elle said it's a good like almost a good like learning curve because you watch it and you're like you're learning about how these diseases are passed and things like that so yeah. Yeah. we watched it the other night great cast by the way isn't everyone's in it aren't they Matt Damon Matt Damon Kate Winslet yeah. Um, Gwyneth Paltrow. I think Gwyneth Paltrow put a picture up on Instagram. Huh? Gwyneth Paltrow put a picture up on Instagram a couple of about a month or so ago. She was on a plane and she had a face mask on, and she literally put, "I've already been in this movie, thanks." Like not taking any chances, and it was oh, referenced to that. Like she was like, "I've lived this." <laughs> wow. Yeah. We we could sit and talk about this all day, so maybe we should just do part yeah. two soon. But um, yeah, thanks for coming on, El. It's been yeah, thank you, thank you mate. having us, lads. It's been great. But yeah, I'll see you both soon. I hope. Let's go pop world. When all this yeah, let's go over. pop world. When I'm allowed. Yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right, El. Take care, mate. Thanks. Lots of love. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, Bye. loads of love, guys. See you later. Annoyed. You're still annoyed. I'm still annoyed. <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I had to stop. I had to go straight into the chat because Tomo is he's, he's punched hole in his wall. He's kicked yeah. off the toilet. <laughs> yeah. Charlotte's um, moved out. Charlotte's gone. Charlotte's She's gone back to her mum's. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed that. Really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was a nice chat. And again, for me, not really, not really knowing uh, Eleanor as, as well as you, um, it was nice to kind of meet her. Uh, properly ish, uh, yeah. virtual. And- yeah, we had that good night out in Manchester, though, didn't we? That was good fun. Yeah, we did Pop World, which um, in the chat as just then we've 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 said we'll uh, we'll we'll 
will recreate and that once once uh, civilization gets back to mm. normal and uh, um, hopefully pop world will be open and and, and beckoning up, beckoning us in yeah maybe we should do eleanor tomlinson part two recorded at pop world <laughs> yeah just shouting really loudly yeah, yeah. so what do you not like about in here <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's the sticky flowers. <laughs> um, yeah, brilliant. Again, little podcast, episode four, man. We're a month in. Um, yeah, which is crazy. We've got some great guests coming up. Still, still, we've got some. Yeah, we really have. Like, we've been so blessed that people like Eleanor, Martin, Vicky, and, and you know, and, and everyone else that we, we've had on. It, we've, we've been so like. And we're so grateful as well for the time that people have given us during this time. Um, I mean, for me personally, when people ask me to do things like podcasts and things, I'm sort of like jumping at the opportunity at the minute because it's my way of keeping creative and keeping busy. Um, but I get that sometimes it's that's not people's the way people want to do it. People might want to switch off. Um, so, yeah, if any if any of the, the uh, previous guests are listening, not just for this series, for the previous series as well, Um then thank you for taking the time because we do appreciate it. But um, yeah, they're just for me. Again, I know I think we said it in episode two with Martin. Every time we record an episode, I I always say it because whenever we whenever we end the call or we walk away from our guest, we always have a chat me and Andy, and we always say, I think that was our best one yet. I think that, was, and we say it every time. Um, and so so, but you know, again, this this was this was brilliant. Although the subject was absolutely tosh <laughs> that's um, bullshit uh yeah yeah uh again we we say don't we we don't always have to agree with our guests and i think this is one where we don't agree well uh, you sort of said that you do agree i, I mean I, I get where i get a point i don't agree that nando's is overrated though i do enjoy nando's i think it's a, it's a nice uh it's a nice restaurant there is things yeah. what eleanor said where she says i don't like when you walk in and they say, and you said it actually, you went, yeah, yeah. I've been to Nando's before. Of course I've been to fucking Nando's before. Don't ask stupid questions, first of all. Secondly, why they sit you down so then you have to go up and order is like, I don't, yeah, I don't know. It's like, it's a restaurant. I thought that they would have taken your order. And then that way it makes it easier to, to tip the, if you want to leave a tip and things like that, because yeah. it can be a bit of a nightmare going up and ordering. I guess the sort of, the waiters and stuff may be potentially, well, potentially missing out on tips. Exactly. Because exactly. if I have a good meal, I like to tip. Same, same. And as I always have a good meal in Nando's. So yeah, you want to tip, you know and you already. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You pay for it. Bring the bill to the table, and you'll get more tips, Nando's. Exactly. I, I mean, I'll only take a black card for suggesting that. That's fine. <laughs> that's all I want. Just a black card. I don't think you're gonna get one now after this. Um, well, I think I will because I defend it. So. <laughs> so yeah. you got me sword and that. Yeah, I think uh, Eleanor. Um, me and Eleanor, we were saying, I said, it will be my life. I, I mean, I can, you know, I've, I've, I've had awards. I've accepted Biffers and Empire Awards and, and blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you know, but. Uh, I don't know if you know. Kind of um, a- I'd go show you one, but my dad won't give me them back. I won them when I was a kid and I'm not allowed them. Uh, mm-hmm. But I, I mean, I can win a BAFTA or I could win, win an Oscar. But I think I'd be proud of a black card. I think, I think genuinely I would be more like, oh, my God, I've got a black card than I would if I won a BAFTA. I think. A BAFTA don't get you no free meals, does it? No, you get a meal on... Oh, you don't even get a meal at the BAFTAs, so... I mean... Up your game. It's bullshit. Do you know what I mean? I agree with Martin. <laughs> I, I um, agree with Martin. So, we've not discussed this, um, but what do you think... Um, I think I think the people who stay on the podcast to, like, this time now, you know, we're a good hour or so in, maybe even mm-hmm. actually, deserve a treat. Should we, should, we, should we tell them who next week's guest is? We've not discussed it, but I reckon... Because this is you telling me, then, is it? Do you reckon next week's guest, we should we should do the Big Daddy? Should we do Shea should Meadows? We, should we do Shea Meadows next week? Yeah, why not? So if you've listened this long into the podcast, that's your treat. You get to know who, who, who next week's guest is. Yeah. Um, that's, gonna, that's a phenomenal one. And again, we come off the end of that saying it was our best one. And I genuinely think that might have been, you know, good, you know, love to everyone, but like... It's a nice one. It's a nice one. It was one. nice for us to be in control of Shane. Yeah, yeah. It was nice for it was nice for Shane to be on our show. Yeah, <laughs> switching it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. No, that's exciting. That is really exciting. I'm looking forward to that. 
Um, so that's next week, guys. Um, again, thanks for staying on this long. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, that shit thing that YouTubers say, like, subscribe, share, yeah. whatever, ring the bell. I don't know what it is. Uh, if you are listening on uh, just the audio format, thank you very much. Um, I know I prefer listening to podcasts that way. Uh, so thanks for still doing that and thanks for putting up with not yeah. being able to see things like my glasses. Um, and, it, and, and do make sure that you are um, rating us and stuff as well. because Yeah, all that sort of thing. Even putting things on your Instagram story and tagging us and... You know, we'll always put it on our stories and stuff just to try and get the uh, get the word out there more. Because things like that really does help. Because if you've if you've got two hundred followers or three hundred followers on Instagram and they're seeing your stories, that's another three hundred people that might listen to the podcast. And again, we go back to anything that we are going to be making a uh, profit wise, we are going to be donating to local charities, the NHS and the food banks and things like that. So, you know, the the more people you tell, you know, it, the more listeners we get. That that means hopefully we'll get more more income from it that we can just donate to straight away. So yeah, just keep telling your friends and and thank you for listening. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Um, Shea Meadows next week. Big Daddy. Big Daddy.